All right, this one is dedicated to the mothers, man. This is dedicated to the mothers and the females in the struggle. And it's definitely def dedicated to my brother, Anton White. All right, a.k.a. Big Tone out of D.C. All right, so let's just sit back. You know, I'm going to ride today, man. Like I said, this ain't about views, man. This is just to put a message across, a positive message, so you understand what the struggle is about from a brother that been through the struggle. No disrespect to no other channel, but I'm just letting y'all know what time it is from a brother that been in the belly of the beast for 26 years doing life plus 20. All right. This is my lovely mother on the screen, man. You know, yesterday was her 88th birthday. You know, I wanted to enjoy the birthday with her, so I didn't speak on it yesterday with y'all, I wanted to speak on it with her. You understand? Now, this is dedicated to my man, Anton White. You know, dedicated to my man, Anton White, big tone out of D.C. Now, just sit back, let me tell you what it's like so you understand the struggles that I went through or that my mother went through with me for my foolery to stop the youth from going down that same path that I went down. I wanted y'all to see my eyes today, so I wore my clear, you know, Cardi <laughs> All right, big shout out to my clear Cardi <laughs> Big shout out, big shout out. Now, let me tell you, all right, I'm going to take y'all on a ride. You know, sit back, enjoy the ride, man. Put this on your big screen TV when you go home and relax, man. All right, let's put this on your big thing, uh, big screen TV. Now, check. When I got locked up, right, I'm driving down, you know, 8th Avenue. I just copped a brand new Lincoln uh, Continental, you know, not the town car, because the town car was too big and boxy and crazy for me. So I just had the, you know, a brand new uh, 92, uh, 90, what was it, 93 uh, Lincoln Continental, you know. It was gray with burgundy interior, I had... TVs in the dashboard, TVs in the headrest, and the TV in between the armrest for the people in the back because I got to make sure that my people is comfortable. Gunshots to my people being comfortable. All right, gunshots. All right, so now, I, I know I'm not sounding a little, uh, you know, a little serious, a little, you know, what y'all might call down, but it's not down. It's just being serious because it's a touching moment. That's my lovely mother on the screen. That's from last night. She made 88 years old last night. You know what I mean? So I want everybody to put a big happy birthday shout out to Mama Dukes. Mama Dukes, right? Let me tell you who this woman is so you understand. Back in 1964, when I was born, my mother left me and my other five brothers and sisters. At the time, I was the baby of the family with my grandmother and my grandfather who was married. So I seen a family structure growing up. So I want y'all to understand the importance of a family structure. Because when I came to America, I got, I, I, I got pulled astray from the family structure and fell into the savage way of being raised, thinking that it's all about you, forget a female and everything else. Never learned that from my mother. Never learned that from my grandfather. Never learned that from my grandmother. Because I watched my grandfather go to work every week and bring home his couple of what we call in Jamaica shillings. What y'all call here dollars, <laughs> you know, because we under the queen's rule, <laughs> you know. Now, grandpa used to bring home his little shillings every week and hand it to my grandmother. My grandmother would pay whatever bills, get whatever she needed to do for a bakery because she was a baker. My grandfather's name is Augusta Garvey. His first descendant, his first cousin is Marcus Garvey. And his grandmother and grandfather is also Marcus Garvey's grandmother and grandfather, if you want to know how I'm connected to the bloodline. Now, you creeps and trolls, I hate y'all with a passion. You know what I mean? But, you know, I respect you. I respect your foolery. You know what I mean? So I know you look for things to say, so go look that up in the archive. My grandfather, Augustus George uh, uh, Garvey, is first cousins with Marcus Garvey. 
My, my lovely mother right there on the screen got pictures of my grandfather with Marcus Garvey, you know, and her when she was a baby. She was born in 1935. You know what I mean? You know, so just so you understand how this thing worked. Now, let me get into where I'm at, right? So it's like y'all just don't understand how important a mother is because I've always loved my mother because I've always been a mama's boy, you know? I've always been a mama's boy, you know? Now, my mother got in a car accident in 1968 out in Jersey, and she was driving a 68 and a half Camaro, and the steering wheel went through her stomach. It stabbed her in her stomach because they had the steering wheel come out, you know, from the column and then in to make it more like a stick shift like this. You understand? Instead of the stick shift, you know, in the center of the console, it came out from the column and then in. My mother had an accident and this collar, the steering wheel, uh, the stick shift went in her stomach and stabbed her like a knife. She almost died, you know. Of course, she sued. When she sued in the first money my mother got, and I got all this on tape with her telling this story. The first money my mother got, she put it together and she sent and did the paperwork to bring my brothers and sisters, six of us, all six of us up here at the same time to the United States of America to give us a better life. Because we was in Jamaica with no shoes, you know, uh, 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 very limited food to eat, you know. We was eating off the land. I can remember far back as I was six years old, five, six years old, and my grandfather telling me to hold the chicken down so he could chop his neck off, blood squirting up in my face and his chicken running around with his head cut off and I'm sitting here as a little boy looking like, oh my God, picture you at six years old holding a chicken down for your grandfather to chop the head off and then it running around and blood squirting out the top of the neck. It has no head and it's running around. You understand? And when it goes towards the family members, what? Kicking it out the way. Like it's garbage. You understand? So I want you to understand the mentality of somebody from a third world country having to live like this. Meaning Mexico, Guatemala, uh, uh, Jamaica, Cuba, you, you know, uh, uh, Virgin Islands, Barbados, you know, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Picture six years old experiencing that. And then here I go at six, I'm crying. You know what I mean? I'm crying. You know? Like, oh my God. And my grandfather came over and he used to do a thing called pluck. You know what I mean? Where he took his fingers just like this and then he did it like this. Plucked me in the side of my head and said, boy, where I do mine up? <laughs> you know? You know? When I murdered a chicken, when I killed the chicken. And that's where I got my first lessons, man, that I took with me for the rest of my life. My grandfather explained to me that in order to kill a chicken to eat even though you chopping the head off that you're killing for survival because you need to eat the meat in order to survive he said but if i just went to shoot the chicken or just chop the chicken head off and leave the chicken out there for no reason he said now that's premeditated murder so there's a difference between killing and murder i give y'all I give y'all nothing, you know, I give y'all nothing but, uh, uh, I give y'all nothing but jewels on here, so you understand. Yo, what's up? I'm doing a live, man. What's up? Who this? Hey, what you mean? What's going on right now? Uh, come on, man. All right, later. You know? Hey, yo. You know, so, I got a joint where... I want y'all to understand that I give y'all nothing but jewels on here. You understand? Nothing but jewels. Now, Grandpa broke down the difference between killing and murder. You follow me? So once he broke down the difference between killing and murder, it made it more acceptable to see blood and death. So that's why when you see, you know, and, you know, I, I got I got homies that came to this country. You know what I mean? And you know, I pray for them, you know, because I know a couple that have decapitated humans behind seeing this growing up. You understand? 
And my grandfather always explained to me the difference between killing and murder. He said, you're going to go a foreign and you're going to see a lot of murder and you're going to see a lot of killing. He said, don't go up in those people country and go murdering anything because man is not supposed to murder. Period. But man kills for survival. It's been happening from the beginning of time. Young as y'all listen to this. Meaning those senseless shootings that you're doing just to shoot your ops, that's called murder. I don't want you to commit murder. I'm sure your parents, your lovely mother don't want you to commit murder. Look at my mother over here, 88 years old and survived. And she told me she's so proud of me for what I'm doing for y'all on YouTube. You know, I talked to my man in Tone White yesterday and he spoke to my mother. And that's when he told me, yo, you need to do a show on the significance of a mother in the struggle while we're doing time. Now, I'm going to get to that because I'm riding. You know what I mean? Let me ride, man. Let me ride. Gunshots to the ones that don't understand the way Unique ride. Gunshots. You know what I mean? Now, let me go because now this is how it is. So, you know, mom sent for all of us and brought us up here to America. When she brought us all up here, we lived in a one-bedroom apartment that she was renting out to a tenant. And the other six of us had to sleep in the kitchen with two kitchen chairs pulled together, sleep in a bathtub, you know, sleep in the corner by the radiator to stay warm. This is how I was raised. You know what I mean? That don't justify anything that I've done along my path. But I'm just giving you all the insight on, you know, a mother's love, you know? And my mother let us know that as long as we all here together, we are family and we're happy. This is what happiness is, is being with your family. That's what my mother taught me. So you youngins, when your mother teach you something, listen. You know, I listened, you know what I mean? But I didn't process it at the time. Because I'm going to keep it 100. See that beautiful woman next to me over there right now? I hated her with a passion growing up. That was my thoughts. I hated her because she was so strict. You know, my brother went out and got in a fight. You know, I, you know, the kids picked on him. He was by himself. They picked on him because he my Jamaica and my life at the way my chopped on the clothes in my wear. And we're not even, we're not even aware. Socks at them time there. And this is January, February 1972 in America when it was cold out. You remember January, how cold it was. We never had no socks on our ankles. Ashi, our skin, Ashi, because we not use lotion. Cause we don't have no lotion in Jamaica because we use the natural sunlight. So we come up far and we have, to, we have to learn these things. And at the time, we couldn't afford these things. So the picnic, them, meaning children of America, they teased us. So they would tease my brother one day and him run home and him and cry, you know. And when they were coming out of the house, you know, and my mother said, we all cry for him. I said, no, the boy, they might tease me all day. And da, 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 da. My mother said, so what? You, 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 you don't box them in them fears? Box me. Slap. <laughs> she said, you don't box them in them fears? And my brother said, no, I'm going to run home because it was too much of them. And my mother whooped his ass right there in front of all of us. And at the time, he was eight years old. My mother said, don't you ever run from a fight. I don't care how many people is there. And if you run, you know, like you said, it was too many to fight. Then you go back and you catch them when... It's more equal, but you give them the fight they want to bring to you. So my mother said, yo, you need get up, you know. Go out there with your brother and find out who I'm going to fight with. I make sure to go out there and beat them up and put up a good fight. long as you want to go out there and fight, you don't win. Whether you lose, you still win. No, no. Pack up on the things and tie up on the shoes and go on out there, <laughs> you know. So we went out there and we went out there rumbling. You understand what I'm saying? We went out there rumbling. It was about six of them and two of us. We grabbed two sticks and we fight. Not promoting no violence, man. Just telling you how I was raised by this beautiful woman to survive in this country, to survive on this universe. She said, never pick on nobody. If somebody I pick on somebody, you defend them. Big shout out to my man, Mark Birnbaum, Jewish brother that I met. Jewish, well, I say brother because he's my brother. But he's a white Jewish kid that I met in fourth grade and everybody was picking on him, you know. And I went home and told my mother that I beat up a kid at school because he was picking on a little Jewish kid, you know. And my mother gave me a hug. 
And that's when she went and bought us our first pair of socks. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was the reward. Big shout out, Mark Burn Brown. You got me my first pair of socks. Ra round of applause. Yeah. Round of applause. Yeah. Round of applause. All right, calm down, calm down. Relax, y'all. Relax, relax. Moms bought us our first pair of socks. You know, our, uh, those white tube socks with the colors on the top for me, the friend and a kid named Mark Burn Brown. You know, we was in fourth grade. Now, you know, other than that, she used to buy us socks, but she bought us uh, each a bag of socks. You know what I mean? Me and Peter, because she treated us all alike. That's why even though he's a year older than me, I call him my twin because we was raised together for my grandparents and my mother as twins to think alike, move alike, fight alike, survive alike. And God willing, die alike. You know what I mean? And I lost my brother. Rest in peace to my brother, Peter. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. You know what I mean? Rest in peace. You know, I lost my brother in the struggle. He got two to the head. Like I said, I'm riding. So I'm going to go back to 70s. You know what I mean? But right now, you know, we're in 1994, uh, October. I lost my brother, you know? And like I said, those people came in and they bought big 8 by 10 pictures, colored pictures of my brother with his brains blown out, you know? These was a bunch of, you know, crackers. Yeah, I'm going to say crackers. You know, it was like four white dudes and one black dude, but it was all crackers. White people is not crackers. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when you do evil things like this under the guides of being a government official, you're a cracker. You're the worst type of human being. I had to sit there handcuffed and shackled to a table like this with my feet shackled to the floor looking at pictures of my brother with his brains blown out. So that's why I'm in a serious mood right now. I'll probably lighten up in a minute, but I'm just going to ride with y'all because this is how I'm feeling because my mother made 88. You know what I mean? But anyway, my mom bought us our first pair, our first bag of tube two tops. Before that, we got a pair here and a pair there because, you know, you know, Woolworth was open. The, you know, we didn't really have the bag like that, you know. So she bought us our first bag of sweat socks for me defending a white kid in uh, elementary school in fourth grade. And now I got multiple pairs to put on, you know. Big shout out to Mark Burn Brown again. <laughs> Big shout out. Big shout out. Relax, relax, relax. So once I explained that to Mom Dukes what was going on, she understood that. You understand? And she told me, if you see anyone disrespecting a woman on the street, a child on the street, or a, a, a weaker person, whether they're adult or not, you know what I mean? You make sure you defend them because you never know when I might be in trouble as your mother and we need karma to come back to help me. You understand what I'm saying? This is how my mom's raised us so you understand, you know? But anyway, so let me speed up a little bit, man, because I'm riding, like I said, I'm in a serious mode. This ain't about views. This is just to give you all the jewels that I've gotten so that if one person, child or adult, could comprehend the emotion and passion, you understand? And honor and respect and, you know, that I have for my mother, you understand? Then they'll be able to respect their mother even if they mad at their mother for whatever reason they think now. And there's no reason for you to ever be mad at your mother. Like I said, I thought I hated that woman because she was so strong. When Peter came home and said he got beat up, she beat me up. <laughs> in the house playing with my Tonka truck and I got beat up. You know what I mean? I got a whooping, you know, along with Peter. You know, Peter go out there, they teasing me, ran home, he didn't fight and I got beat up, you know? And I'm sitting there like, why you beat me up? I'm in there, I wasn't even out there. She said, that's why I'm beating you up. Don't you ever leave your brother's side because you are your brother's keeper. So me and my brother you know, we had to go out there and we went to put on our winter coats. And she said, what are you doing with that? I said, it's cold outside. She said, no, nah, it ain't going to be cold once you get out there to fighting. Leave that coat there for somebody pull it over your head and strangle you to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what my mother telling me at eight, nine years old. That's the gangster. You see that purse she's holding? That's a Prada, you know, purse, uh, pocketbook she got because she said she want to have a nice 
pocketbook to go to work with. So my oldest sister, Marlene, the lawyer, brought a Prada pocketbook. I bought a bunch of nice dresses with like the bright, the chic colors, you know what I mean? So she could feel nice sitting in her chair because that's what she do most of the time. And, you know, we helping her walk again because she fell down back in 2021 and been having trouble walking since. Then she lost her husband in um, November 2021, November 1st. So we had to bring her up here to New York with us. But I want you to understand about a mother, man. You know, how much you have to love and respect and honor your mother. And what is a mother? A mother's a woman. So that's how we're supposed to love, honor, and respect our women. And I'm not ashamed of nothing that I've done in my life. Not even, you know, poisoning my community. You know what I mean? And I apologize for poisoning my community. You understand what I'm saying? But at the time, I needed to do that to survive the same way we needed to hold the chicken down and chop the head off to survive to eat. Not mollifying, which is psychology, because I took 3,500 hours to find out why my mind was twisted like this. So you trolls might not understand this because you're cowards. You don't know anything about survival. You know about your, 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 your mother giving you something, your friend giving you something, the government giving you something. You know? But I was raised where I had to go get my own. Because my mother said we ain't dependent on the government for nothing. She never took no food stamps. She never took, and not saying anybody wrong for, for accepting it, but that's just how my mother was prideful. She's like, I didn't come to America for them to take care of me. I came to America for a better way to take care of you. You know what I mean? Big shout out to Anton White again. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Relax, 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 relax. You know, I mentioned his name again because he's the one that told me to do this show. That's why I told you it's dedicated to him. You understand? So you understand. I'm 59 years old. When I was a child, I thought I hated this woman, man. Cause she was so strict. Cause she gave me a whooping for my brother getting, for my brother running home from a fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Put those life lessons triggered in. Once we hit the streets and had to survive on our own, and she was no longer around us. So that's why I love her to death. Because of her, I'm still alive. You know, and I thank her for that. You know what I mean? And you know, God chose to, you know, take my brother whether whether it was through the hands of a murderer. But that's a part of the struggle when you choose to enter the streets. That's why I tell the youngins, don't go to the streets. It's not worth it. Because I'm telling you that I accept my brother being murdered. I accept my brother being murdered. I'm going to say it again. Gunshots. Gunshots. You know what I mean? I accept that because we ran the streets and that come with the streets and we made the wrong choice and went down the wrong road. God give us many choices, man. Just like my five fingers on my hand. You know what I mean? These are five different roads that God give us in every situation. And it's more than five different roads. You know what I mean? Because my brother could have stayed and fight. That was one road. He could have ran home and told mommy that was another road. You understand? He could have ran to go get a friend to help. That was another road. Or he could have ran and hid. That was another road. But he chose the road to run home. But God gives us these choices. And I'm trying to tell you, being that I didn't have anybody to guide me in the, in the right direction because my mother was a woman raising men to survive in a foreign land. And this is how she chose to do it. And it kept me alive for 59 years next, this coming May 8th. You know, and today, I would give my last breath for that woman on the screen. If God came to me right now and said, you need, you have to die today in order for your mother to see tomorrow another day. I welcome him taking my life just for her to see another day and she's 88. How many of you have that much love for your mother? 
And that's why at 59, I have that much respect for a woman. I mean, I used to disrespect women. That's the only thing that I'm ashamed of, is the disrespect that I put towards a woman when I was out there on the street. I sold drugs for survival. I was wrong for that. I apologize for that. Let's get that straight. But at the, at, the, at the time, that's all I knew, and that's how I chose to survive. And I apologize for that. But I don't re regret that because we survived, and it's all about self-preservation. At the time, where my mindset was at, instead of self-preservation for our community, but these are the things that I know now at 59, so that's why I'm man enough to tell you that I apologize. I'm giving y'all a lot of jewels, man. Make sure y'all understand that, you know, the Cash App is dead, man. I don't even have the Cash App flash of the day because y'all supposed to know. I'm giving y'all jewels to take with you for a lifetime that might save your life or your child or your loved one's life. So if that's not worth the Cash App, I don't know what to tell you, man. You know, continue to pay your Netflix bills and stars and showtimes and watching Power and Empire and, you know, Your Honor and all of these shows. They got to play these games with you to make you feel like you a gangster to go out there and try and be like BMF and, you know what I mean? And, and what's the other boy? And ghosts and, you know, when I'm giving you jewels to save your life by telling you youngins to go to school, respect the women around you. <clears throat> respect your mother that's what this is about you understand now let me get into the struggle man because this, this, this damn this 26 minutes already you know what i mean all right but let me get into the struggle man let me get into the struggle before we do that let me let me cheer this up a little bit and uh we're gonna put on you know my little intro get a little music in that i'm gonna liven this back up all right so let's go Let's cheer this up. <clears throat> Let's fast forward. I got locked up and I'm doing life. When I got locked up, I called my mother when I got locked up. And the first thing my mother said to me on the phone was, baby, you know what you got to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? The first thing my mother said, baby, you know what you got to do. And that did not mean telling on my brother, my comrades, my woman, you know, nobody. That meant you got to man up, nigga. Because you chose to run the streets. She told me not to run the streets. My mother never encouraged me to run the streets. But my mother always said, I'm going to support anything you do and pray to God for forgiveness for the choices you make because you're your own man. And that's not what I raised you to do. But if that's what you choose to do as a mother, I have to, you know, pray and support you, which is what she did. Now, so when she did that, the feds, they got a thing where they say everybody has a breaking point. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody has a breaking point. So being that everybody has a breaking point, you know, they feel like everybody has a breaking point. So, you know, they just have to figure out what that breaking point is. So they knew that my breaking point was my mother. You know what I mean? They knew my breaking point was my mother. So they went after my mother. You understand? So when they go after my mother, they think that that's going to break me and make me, you know, cooperate with them. But my mother said straight up, baby, you screwed up. You got caught. So you know what you got to do. You know what I mean? You got to handle your responsibility and your reaction to your actions to choose to run the very streets that I told you not to run. And I said, Mama, you ain't got to tell me all that. She said, no, nah, but I just want you to understand that I, I understand what you're going through. And no matter what, Mommy's going to be here for you. 
and mommy's not going nowhere until you come home. Those people can't give you life or take your life because only God could do that. And you was a good child to your mother. You was a good brother to your brothers and sisters. So therefore, God is going to look out for you and bring you home to me. And I'm not going anywhere. Look at the woman on the screen. When I left, she was younger than the age I am right now. And we was going to clubs together in Miami, Florida. Big shout out to the Roman pub. You know what I mean? Big shout out to the Roman pub. You know? I used to take my moms to what they called the Haitian club down there. Yeah, we are Jamaican. But we used to go to the Haitian club because they played Jamaican music and, you know, me and moms hang out. You understand? Just so you see what I'm dealing with. So I leave a woman younger than me and come home to an 86-year-old woman. She was 88 yesterday. Love her to death. But when we're in prison, so you understand, you know, I used to call my mother every Sunday. You understand? And some days I ran back from the law library from studying, trying to find my, the key for my freedom and say, Mommy, Mommy, well, you know, we got caught up a little late. I'm sorry for calling late because I know, you know, you like to watch your, what was that you watching? Your, your, your American Idol or whatever it is she was watching. And she said, Baby, don't worry about calling me every week. You just do what you need to do to come home to me tomorrow. You know? She says, so I'm not going to hold you. If the move is still on, go back to the library and finish doing what you're doing, baby. I understand if you don't call me. That's I sometimes I went six months without talking to my mother because I was so focused in getting my freedom to come home. You understand? And my mother would always send me a letter weekly saying, baby, I understand. When your mind free up, call me. I'll be here. You understand what I'm saying? That's how gangster my mother is. She said, when your mind free up, call me and I'll be here. Six months without talking to my mother. I went from, I went from 1993 when I got locked up, from December 1993 when I got locked up until June 2010. Y'all add that up. You know what I mean? That's how many years I went without physically touching my mother, without physically seeing my mother. Because, you know, I was fighting for my freedom and screwing up. I'm selling drugs, I'm carrying knives, I'm making knives, I'm stabbing people, I'm wilding, but I'm still in the law library. Don't justify the foolery I just said that I did. You understand? But it took that many years. I had long dreads down my back, you know? And in 2010, my mother said, you know, I got moved from California. I was always across country, that's why I couldn't see it. I'm in California, Colorado, you know, Lee County, Virginia. I'm all over the damn place playing with these European rules. And I had long dreads down my back. And I just sent the pictures home with my shirt off. Everybody loved the pictures. Said I looked like a chocolate model and all this. And mom said, baby, you know, you know I'm going to like the dreadlocks thing. You know, no disrespect to my dreadlocks people watching this. But my mother said, baby, you know, you do too much botanist when you are running with the dreadlocks. And you know, you know, the dreadlocks, you know, she looked at it because she's older and was there from the beginning of the Rastafarian movement in the 60s in Jamaica. And she still see it that we was rebellious because we was prideful and honorable as Rastas. You understand? And we stood up against all oppositions, including government opposition. And my mother said, I don't want to see my baby as that. I want to see that you have changed. And I love my mother so much. She said, you know, when I come see you for the first time, I don't want to see you with the dreadlocks. Cause I don't want to remember who you were. I want to remember who you are today as a man. So I had to take a fresh start the same way I told you that 
If God told me I had to give my life today at 59 so my 88-year-old mother could see one more day in life, God take my life. So when mommy said she didn't want to see me with the dreadlocks because she didn't want to remember all the badness because as a rude boy, I had to honor that. I'm going to chop it off. You understand? And so you understand, so the dreadlocks, they understand. You know what I'm saying? It's open to understand. We give a look about, the, about Rasta. You know, Rasta is like Samson and Delilah. Samson was the strongest man until she allowed Delilah, until he had allowed Delilah to cut off his locks. Once I cut my locks off, you understand? That's when I got hit in the face with a lock. Boop! Big shout out to the nigga that hit me in the face with a lock. <laughs> calm down, y'all. Calm down. Calm down. That's when I got hit in the face with a lock had my nose separated from my lip the same day I cut my dreads. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why Rasta said you can't chop off your locks because of your strength, that. But for the love that I had for my mother, me chop off my dreads, I get busted on my face. I, mean, I tell you, say, I give you the man that bust me in the face. A big shout out. All right? Big shout out. Now we ride. This how we ride. You know what I mean? And unique. Make an audio. Go to my podcast and download something off my podcast. So I get these uh, thousand downloads, man. Unique. Make audio podcast at Spotify and all that. They tuning it up on uh, iMovie and all that iTunes, whatever it is. But it's on Spotify and some other stuff. Put in unique. Make audio podcast. You know, and download a video. But I'm gonna put this up there too. But that's where we was at. You understand? Mom Dukes was no joke, you know? I give moms anything. Now you see me as a ballad next to me, mother. My love her more than life and whatever she want me, I give her. And that's the same way I'm telling the youngest to love your mother. I met a dude, let's ride, eh? Long Park 2002. I'm in the hole. I did 18 months in the hole, Long Park 2002. You know what I mean? And just so you understand, I met a brother from Arizona. I'm not even going to say his name because he might be watching this. You know what I mean? I don't want to put him on the spot. I met a brother that I loved to death. When I got into it, I got cut in the face in Lump Park. That's how I got this cut. Remind me to tell y'all about how I got this cut because that ain't about nothing. And big shout out to the nigga that cut me in the face. <laughs> big shout out to the nigga that cut me in the face. You know, big shout out. You know, I can laugh at it because I know the rules to the game. As many people as I cut in the face, how could I be mad at a dude for cutting me in the face when I don't cut a bunch of people in the face? I'll be a hypocrite to say I'm mad at a dude for doing something to me that I've done to others. Gunshots to anybody that don't understand that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, cutting nobody in the face, you're not for worried about getting cut in the face. You know, you don't run the boy that body over no cow. You're not for worry about, you know, get run over by a cow. You pick me or somebody in your next generation get run over by a cow. All the badness that me do. Over the time we run the streets, I got come back for affect somebody in my bloodline, whether it's this generation, the next generation, or the next generation. And I'm saying for when they look back to this and... Uh, 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 law forbid, God forbid, Jah forbid, Buddha forbid, you know, that my great-great-grandchild get cut in the face, I'm apologizing to you today. Because that's because of my actions, because karma is a bitch and she don't miss no nigga. So that's why I'm telling y'all don't run the streets. Get out the streets, go get a job. Go study, get your masters, get your bachelors, do all of that. And then that's what your future generation will get. That's what the Europeans call old money. You know what I mean? Them Europeans got money back then from doing what, you know what I mean? Ducking and jiving, what they call the right way, but they just didn't get caught. You know what I mean? But they had that money to leave behind for the next generation. And that's why, you know, you got the Hiltons. You understand what I'm saying? With the hip hotel. You understand? That's why you got the Kennedys. You know, that's why you got the Bushes. You know, and we know they did dirt. 
So when one of their kids become a crackhead, you know, uh, 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 get raped or, you know, not wishing that on nobody, you know, or rape somebody, you know, they done had all of these, or kill their wife or whatever, that's because that's the karma from somebody in their past generation have done to someone else. And that's when the bitch karma caught up with them. <laughs> Y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm a little too deep for y'all. This is already at 39 minutes, but I'm going to ride because I want y'all to understand this. This is for my man, Anton White. So y'all thank Anton White for this video. And I know it's long, so you're going to have to stop and watch it later because your attention span don't let you sit down long, except my lawyers' supporters, they do. You know what I mean? So the new jacks that don't understand it, that say, um, uh, whatever, stick to the topic, gunshots, nigga. All right, that's how I feel about you, cold suckers. But anyway, let me get back to my, you know, my real supporters, you know, surprise subscribers. Now, Mama Dukes told me she used to take my picture and hold it up in the mirror every morning and every night before she go to bed. Look at my picture. Look in my eyes in the picture and pray to God to protect me and bring me home before he takes her life. She did this for 26 years. And she used to always tell me, I used to even, sometimes I got, I got so tired, mentally so tired. I said, Mommy, when is it going to be over? You said you've been praying. You told me to pray. I've been praying. She said, baby, it's going to be over when God feel it's time and you're ready to come back and get on YouTube and do the right thing and save some of these dumb young kids that don't understand. You know what I mean? That karma's a bitch. And you got to respect your mother and women. Because if you disrespect the women, you understand? Who's there to protect them? Who's there to raise the babies if, we dis if we're disrespecting the nurturers of the baby? This is how I was taught. And yeah, I disrespected women. I had 20, 30 women. I was out. Some days I might have had sex with 10 women. You know what I mean? Just keep it in 100. You know what I mean? Gunshots to me being a fool, but enjoying it at the moment. You know? What you think is enjoyment at the moment might be the detriment of you. Do you know? Let me give y'all another jewel. You know what I mean? That's why I said the cash app on the screen, man. That's why I said. And yeah, both cash apps work. The Unique God 777 and dollar sign Unique Mega Audio. I um, mean, Unique Mega Hall. Now, you know, so you understand, you know, we sit here and we do things and not think of the consequences or the reaction to our actions because we're only thinking for the moment. You understand? But... Once you understand that there's a reaction to your actions, then you'll think before you carry out those actions if you don't want that reaction to come. Y'all paying attention? Like I said, I don't care how many views, views I get on this. You know, because this is for my man, Anton White, man. This is for all the brothers out there that he wanted me to reach through this video. As, as Antone said, let me give you one Antone said. Antone's statement that he's always taught me by him just saying it was him teaching me because we learn from look, listening, and observing. What my brother Antone White used to always say was, siblings is born through the womb. But code and conduct is what makes us brothers because we both follow the same code and conduct. So you're my brother. Bottom line. Code and conduct is what makes us brothers. Not just being born through the womb. Because the ones that's born through the womb. When it's nine times out of ten. Is the ones that's going to cross us. Eh? Let me go back to 2002 Lumpur. I meet a brother from Arizona. Speed this up because I'm on here in 45 minutes already. I met a brother from Arizona. Cool brother. Loved him to death. But I got cut in the face. Dude was right there. You know what I mean? I, I, you know, he ready to cut up everything. He ready to go to war with me. 
You know what I mean? This is how my man is. Official dude from Arizona. If he see this and you want me to say your name, because I don't say names without talking to my men, my comrades, before I put their names out here. But he told me when I was, me and him in the cell. You understand what I'm saying? And he used to tell me he hated his mother because his mother gave him up to her best friend because she was on crack and his mother was never there. And he called his mother's best friend mommy and he would never call his mother mommy. I said, nigga, watch your mouth. He said, what you talking about? I said, nigga, right here, we'll tear this cell up and one of us got to die in this cell if you disrespect your mother again in front of me. And he said, F that bitch. You understand what I'm saying? And I had to stop and think. I said, you want me to kill you up in here? And he said, but no, nah, you, you know, you the big homie, but that's how I feel. That's when I sat him down. I said, look, big bro, your mother gave you up because she knew her, her addiction was too strong for her to be able to care for you and give you the things you needed. So she gave it to her best friend who she knew could give you a better life. She didn't give you up because she didn't want you, she hated you or whatever. She gave you up because she loved you, my brother. And he's like, but yo, it hurts you. I said, big brother, I know it hurts. You understand? I said, God allowed another man to take my brother's life, and that hurts. But I'm not gonna curse God, because that's what he felt I needed to move on through the rest of this journey now without my brother. So never will I curse or forsake God, because my brother lost his life for his choices. So I don't feel you should curse your mother because your mother gave you up to her best friend to raise you because her choices to smoke crack cocaine was wrong. She knew it was wrong and knew it wasn't an environment to raise you in. By the time that man left his cell, he called his mother and apologized. And they haven't talked since he was like 10 years old. Just to let you know where it's at. Y'all want me to ride? Huh? Y'all want me to ride? Make a what? Make an audio. Y'all want me to ride? Let me know if y'all want me to continue to ride, man. I've already been on here 47 minutes going on 50 minutes, but this is for my mother, 88 birthday. Let me even like my black and mild and relax. I'm going to get in the zone. This might be two hours, man. <laughs> Whoever don't like it, find another goddamn channel. Whatever suckers don't like it, find another channel and... Gunshots to your fake ass. You know what I mean? If you don't like it, you know there's other channels. No disrespect to you. And I apologize if you take it the wrong way. But I still feel the same way. If you don't like it, just go to another channel respectfully. We don't have to be disrespectful in the comments. I don't have to disrespect you on here. But I still feel that. Gunshots. <laughs> All right? So let's go. Now, right, Mama do. My brother was in the cell with me. And by the time I was done breaking down the reason and the love that his mother had for him for doing what she did, you know, that brought me and his bond even closer. I talked to him, you know, cause he went home way before me, you know what I mean? But I talked to him when I went home, I think once or twice, but I was just getting home and, you know, I didn't even have myself together yet. I didn't even really have freedom figured out yet. You know, and, you know, I didn't call him back. He didn't call me back and I lost contact with him. But I'm telling you, little bro, you know, from Phoenix, Arizona, you know who you are. You know what I mean? I'm not going I want to I want to say your name because I want somebody to find you. But being that I spoke on something that was private between me and you in that cell, you know, as a man of honor and respecting the code of conduct, I'm not going to reveal our secrets. Because you got suckers out there. Let me tell you about a sucker. Let me tell you about a sucker, man. Let me get close and tell you about a sucker right now. A sucker is one that when a comrade reveals personal things to him, he run back and tell others and try and use it against him and belittle him to try and build themselves up by 
picking out your flaws and bringing it to somebody else when they got a million flaws themselves. But instead of them talking about their flaws, a sucker is going to talk about yours. So that's why I won't say my man name. All right? Like I said, I'm right. This is like a live without comments. You know what I mean? This is like a live without comments, man. You know, so y'all be able to watch this for a few days as long as it is. But, you know, I love my brother, man. And he called me when I came home, welcomed me home and all that. Well, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to build with him. Because I had to build with Unique first. And now that I got myself together, I got the hang of this joint. It's my mother, 88 birthday. Brother, I love you. And I hope and pray that when Allah allow us to communicate again, you tell me that you've been spending time with your mother as I've, I've been doing with mine. My mother is 88 years old. She was living down in Florida. The first thing I did when I came home, jumped on a flame, went, plane, went down there to Florida to go see my mother. I crawled in the bed with my mother. And she was married, had a husband. You know, and I'm so selfish. That's my mother. I told that nigga, move over, nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I slept there, hugged my mother the whole night. And he slept on the other side of me. You understand what I'm saying? And then the next morning when I wake up and he get up to go make his breakfast, my mother said to me, baby, you know, I never tell you nothing wrong. You know, she said, that man helped me down while you was gone. I know you my baby. You my man. You're my everything. You're my world. You know what I mean? But... I'm also his world. I love him. He was there for me just like you was there for him. So that next night, you know, I put my mother in the middle of the bed and we both went to sleep hugging my mother, man. <laughs> big round of applause. You know, big round of applause. You know, big round of applause. Calm down, y'all. Calm down. Relax, relax. You know, let me ride, man. Let me ride. Let me ride. You know what I mean? I'm giving y'all some intimate shit right now. You know, so I sat there, me and, you know, his name is Moody, rest in peace. He just died November 1st. Love him to death. What I told Moody, because Moody's about 10 years younger than my mother, you know, what I told Moody, so you understand how real I am, I told Moody that, you know, if my mother passed before you, I would take care of you like you was my own father that raised me. If my mother passed before me, you don't have to worry about nothing. I would take care of you the same as I take care of her because you was there for mine. So I'm going to be there for you, you know? And Allah felt it was time and took him first. You know what I mean? But I love Moody. Rest in peace to Moody. Great man. Excellent man. My mother loved him to death. I hung up a big picture, like 50 inches that I got for my mother from the day they got married, her wed their wedding picture. And my mother lay in her bed and she also sit in the living room and look at this picture. Because she loved that man. And I love him too. You know? But still, I had to have my mother to myself for that first night that I was dead wrong. Make a what? Make a audio. Gunshots. <laughs> you know what I mean? All day. <laughs> you know? But that's how it is, man. You know? Just so you understand, I love my mother. And I'm telling y'all, man, any of y'all out there got issues with your mother because she's trying to teach you the right path. Stop it and forgive her for whatever it is that she was shortcoming in. Because she did the best she could with what she knew at the time. And that's what you have to understand. That's what a mother is, man. You know? When my brother died and they threw the pictures of my brother's brains blown out on that counter and showed it to me, those people looked at me and said, the fox hunt is over. We caught the slippery nigga. This is how they talked about my brother while I'm handcuffed and shackled and I'm looking at him. You know, when I went back up there and I was crying on the phone to my mother, I went on the phone. I never let nobody see me cry. Only person see me cry was this woman and my son one time. My son, my son, Wayne, you know, what I mean, my second, I got two sons named Waynesworth. You know, my, my, my second son, Wayne, was the only one that seen me cry. Other than my mother. My whole, my whole adult life, I'm going to say. And my adult life started from I was about 12, 11. 
and no one had never seen me cry. I took a blanket and went over to the phone and I had to break the news to my mother that my brother died. And she asked me how. I said, Mama, you don't want to know. She said, no, I want to know. You know what I mean? Because however he died, that was God's will because God wouldn't have allowed anything that he didn't want to happen. And when I told her that he got two shots to the head and they blew his brains out and they showed me pictures with brain matter everywhere, you know? And I was crying when I said that. My mother said her exact words. Boy, way out there, your grandfather not tell you for man up. Your grandfather not tell you for man up. Way I cry for. Him in a better place. Stop your blood clot crying. <laughs> you know, my mother tell me, stop your blood clot crying. Gunshots to my mother, straight gangster. That's the woman you see sitting there. You know? That's the woman you see sitting there so you understand. You know? But that's why I love her to death, man. You know? And she said, you know, hold them tears till you come home. Because me, I go hold my tears till you come home. And then the two of us go cry for your brother together. And that first night, you understand what I'm saying? That first night when I laid down with my brother, I shed a tear. My mother reached over and kissed my tears. And because Moody was in the bed with us, she said, not no, my son, not no. In other words, she didn't want Moody to see me crying. She didn't want Moody, her husband, to meet me crying. That's how gangster my mother is. We ride, man. We ride. Uh, we ride. You know, so just be like, we ride. Now, what, what is it, about an hour now? Four minutes till an hour. But mom's kissed my tears and said, not no, my son. And I look over at Moody and I knew why. You know? So the next day when he get up to make breakfast, my mother tell Moody when I'm go out for go make the breakfast, close the door and knock before you come back in. And Moody gonna make us a big Jamaican breakfast. And while I'm out there, I cook for about an hour. Me and my mother laying out of bed and we cried together the same tears she promised me we, she was gonna allow me to release with her. And Moody never seen me cry for my brother. My children never seen me cry for my brother. That's why they say I'm the strongest man they know. But that's because of the woman, you know what I mean, in that picture. She said, never let a man see you cry. She said, it's all right to cry, but never make a man see you cry. Because if I see you cry, I'm going to misinterpret that for weakness, and then I'm going to know away your treasure. And now, it's the same thing as Delilah knowing Samson's weakness was his hair. And she go after him here. So if I cry for me, pick me them, meaning my children. If she cried for them, and a man see me, I cry for my picnic. If no, me not cry for me, me not surrender for me, but me surrender for my picnic. So me can't make them know say I'm a picnic. I'm a Achilles heel. Now I'm gonna give you another one. If I say Cash App on the screen, I'm gonna tell you about Achilles and Achilles heel. Achilles was an old Greek dude back in the day. You know, give it to you in the hood talk, you know, so the trolls can say what you want. You probably don't even know nothing about Achilles, you know. Achilles was a great warrior. Achilles was a great warrior that went on the field and his body was like armor. Nothing penetrated him, nothing hurted him. And the reason why is because they took him to a pond and they held him by, you know, the back of your foot, that little piece on the back of your foot. You know what I mean? Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I'm even going to do this because I mess with y'all. You know what I mean? This is this this is your Achilles, man. Right here is your Achilles. You have a foot? I see no blood clot. But right here is your Achilles. They held him by his Achilles, man. You know what I mean? And they dipped him in this pond that made his body like armor. So swords and arrows and nothing couldn't penetrate this man. Nothing couldn't penetrate him. You understand? Hence the name Achilles heel. 
you know? So Achille, when they dipped him in the pond, they held him by his Achilles to dip him in the pond. And from them holding that spot, that one spot is the only part that didn't get wet from the pond to become armor. They threw an arrow, a spear, and it hit him in his chest, his arm everywhere, and it just bounced off like Superman. Like Superman. But one of the arrows hit him in his Achilles heel. And that's how he died. Because that was his weakness. Don't allow your enemy to see your weakness. That's why I didn't even cry in front of the police and I, it took everything in me as a man to not cry in front of these people to see my brother with his brains blown out. I know this is a little too real for y'all, man. If I you trolls, go somewhere else, man. You know what I mean? Go somewhere else. You know, cause like I said, I'll block you and delete you in a minute cause I got the power with this YouTube crap. You don't have the power with the keyboard. You just have access to the keyboard. <laughs> Remember that, but I got the power. You know, I'll block you. You make another channel. We play that game. You know, you get one or two comments off before I block you. Yeah, I'm going to do a lot. Screw you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, that's where that's at, man. But my mother helped me down the whole bit. I've been on here an hour now. Exactly an hour and 55 minutes. I'm getting ready to tap out with the intro. If y'all like this content, let me know and I'll give y'all some more. This is my serious mood. Because it's my mother's 88th birthday, man. And I was able to hug this woman and kiss her as a free man in my own house that I moved her in when her husband passed. Now I can take care of my baby the same way she took care of me. Look how happy I am. You know what I mean? If I die today, I die a happy man. I welcome death. That's why they couldn't break me. Because my mother and my grandfather, rest in peace, Augustus Garvey, you know, first descendant with Marcus Garvey, you know, and not saying that to brag, but just letting you know where my bloodline come from, you know? And all this that I'm saying about being connected and having the blood of Marcus Garvey in me, is documented in the archives in Jamaica because my mother and my father's name, you know, my mother's name and my grandfather's name is right there in the paperwork. And we still have land because so many squatters went on the Garvey property because there was nobody there because we was all lost in the wilderness of North America and over abroad, you know. But I'm going to tap out now. I thank you all for tuning in. I thank Anton White, you know, for suggesting that, or should I say requesting that I do this video? Because that's my brother. That's my brother. From the code and conduct that he lived by, which is the same as mine's. Man should not tell on man. Period. Period. You know, now let me tap out, you know what I mean? And, 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 and you know, put this joint up. Before I go, though, man, to the haters, gunshots, gunshots, gunshots. All right, let's go. Cheers, 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 the crime, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime, the crime, the crime. Hey. Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. heat back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix. Yeah. What he mentions a gift. Trust. You stand up ten toes down, and I suggest you pay attention to this. Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in Harlem. Uh. He cut from the bottom, back. came up 
from the bottom. Drop the book, you should go and get it. An Instagram page and a YouTube, you could go and visit. Then you could consider yourself linked in. Sit front row and get Jews from a kingpin. How he went through it, so you ain't gotta go do it. Did not pay attention, would be stupid. Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on. Probably the reason that him and your grams got along. A man that generated millions on the block, did his time. Never squilling to the cops, make an audio. Get it live like two G's in the 90s. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, it's a roaring uptown. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now he trying to stop the kids from being an operative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.